afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. May I see your boarding pass, please? Sure. Just down the aisle on the right, sir. Enjoy your flight. Thank you. Oh. Boarding pass. 81 passengers board Southern Airways Flight 242, a DC-9 bound for Atlanta, Georgia. Many of them are military personnel from nearby bases. Captain Bill McKenzie and First Officer Lyman Keel have been shuttling passengers across the American South all day. We've got the lander. And not me, Mr. Captain. Ignition, sir. Pilots regularly exchange tasks on long days like this one. First Officer Lyman Keel will be handling this leg of the flight. He's an experienced Navy pilot who's been with Southern Airways for four years. Before their last takeoff, the crew was handed a weather report for the airports along their route. Looks like you guys got a good one coming. The DC-9 was introduced in 1965 to fly frequent short flights. Both of its engines are mounted to the rear fuselage rather than the wings. It was designed for takeoff on shorter runways. We had a 13 landing day, which was a lot of small stops, you know, about 20 or 30 minute legs in between. And it was sort of the tour of the south. Skies have been smooth all afternoon, but the weather's worsening. The flight crew is prepared for turbulence. It was raining in Huntsville, and they said, oh, it's going to be some bad weather. Don't serve. So we did not serve from Huntsville to Atlanta, which is a very short route. And we were delighted not to be serving. I was a little surprised that we took off when we did. I really thought we'd taxi out to the end of the runway and hold for a while because the weather looked so bad. But we taxied out and immediately took off. At 3.54 p.m., the DC-9 takes off into a hard rain. The short hop to Atlanta should take just 25 minutes. As Southern Airways 242 flies away from Huntsville, the National Weather Service tracks weather that's far worse than the pilots expect. Tornadoes are touching down all across the south. The weather in the southeast in the United States can be very treacherous. High humidities, high temperatures are a prescription for thunderstorms. And so with all of that kind of moisture in the air and the high convective heating, you're going to have very large thunderstorms that are associated with heavy rains, hail, icing conditions, and extreme winds. And of course, tornadoes that will be spawned from that kind of action. Huntsville Air Traffic Control has some concerns about the gathering storm. Southern Airways 242, I'm painting a line of weather which appears to be moderate to possibly heavy precipitation starting about five miles ahead. Uh, okay, uh, we're in the rain right now. Uh, it doesn't look much heavier than what we're in right now, does it? It's not a solid mass, but it uh, appears to be a little bit heavier than what you're in right now. In 1977, most airliners are equipped with the Bendix weather radar. Pilots are trained to avoid regions that appear bright. Where there's light, there's bad weather. I can't read that. This looks like rain, Bill. What do you think? There's a hole. There's a hole right there. That's all I see. The pilots spot a dark area on their radar, a passageway through the storm. They plan to navigate between towering thunderheads over 14,000 meters. Coming over, we had pretty good radar. I believe right straight ahead. There. The next few miles is probably the best way we can go. But as they head towards the storm system, they get an ominous report from Memphis Air Traffic Control. Attention, all aircraft. SIGMET, Tennessee, Southern Louisiana, Mississippi. SIGMET is short for Significant Meteorological Information. A warning to pilots that dangerous weather is in the region. Here we go. Hold them, cowboy. Pilots don't want to be within 50 miles of a lot of those types of thunderstorms for the very reason that the airplane may not be able to handle it and or the pilots may not be able to control the airplane flying into that kind of activity. Mackenzie and Keel take a harder look at their weather radar. It looks heavy. Nothing's going through that. Mysteriously, the gap the pilots thought they'd spotted no longer seems to exist. That's a hole, isn't it? It's not showing a hole, is it?
the storm suddenly gets much worse. Never heard such loud hail in my life, and in beating on the you know sides of the airplane was extremely deafening. The uh, hail was probably the loudest noise I've ever heard. It sounded like I was in a metal barrel with someone throwing rocks at me. Please keep your seatbelts fastened. We should be out of this shortly. Hail the size of baseballs hammers the DC-9, breaking the plane's windshield. The pilots of Southern 242 had to raise their voices audibly to be heard above the unholy tattoo of this hail which was buckshotting the airplane. These pilots had never been through anything like this before in their lives. Which way do we cross here or go out? I don't know how we get through here, Bill. I don't know. You're just gonna have to go out. Yeah, right across that bay. All clear left, approximately right now. I think we can cut across there. Mackenzie and Keel desperately seek an escape route from the storm. But as they do, the emergency escalates. The plane loses all electrical power. Without power, Keel must keep the aircraft level without an artificial horizon. Now the pilots are left to look back out the window and try and orient the airplane with the horizon. But surrounded by thick cloud, a horizon is difficult to find. It's almost impossible for Lyman Keel to get his bearings. Southern 242, what's your speed? Atlanta Air Traffic Control tries to make contact with Southern Airways. They receive no response. Southern 242, Atlanta, what's your speed? After I realized that we had a disaster in progress, or something was wrong. I got up and started briefing my passengers. The flight attendants were very quick in uh, giving us emergency landing instructions. Uh, there was not uh, very much time for anyone to start panicking. Got it back. Got it back, Bill. Got it back. Got it back. After 36 seconds in the dark, power returns. The instruments come alive and the radio begins working again. Air traffic control finally gets through to Mackenzie and Keel. Maintain one five thousand, if you understand. Maintain one five thousand, Southern 242. Southern Airways Flight 242 has been instructed to fly at 4,600 meters. But the plane has fallen to almost 4,200 meters. We're trying to get it up there. While I was looking out at the front of the left engine, I could see the hail continuing to put more and more dents into the cowling around the engine and into the cone in the center of the engine. And the engine was starting to make sounds like it was quitting. Okay, uh, 242, uh, we just got our windshield busted. We'll try to get it back up to 15. We're at 14. Southern 242, you say you're at 14 now? Left engine won't spool. Our left engine just cut out. You say you lost an engine and uh, busted a windshield? Yes, sir. Oh my God. The other engine's going, too. Got the other engine going, too. So the 242, say again. Stand by. We lost both engines. Both engines are now out. This DC-9 is a glider, and it's falling at 56 feet per second. They're at 14,000 feet. They don't have a lot of time. Get us a vector to a clear area, Atlanta. Lyman Keel adjusts his course to navigate his plane out of the storm. Captain McKenzie must restart the engines, or they'll be forced to make an emergency landing. 